Ladies and gentlemen, I got my boy Wayne with me here, and we're going to talk about one of the most, probably most thought about common subjects when it comes to being an artist, and that's recording. Most of the people I've talked to in my lifetime with music have had the same equipment their entire duration of being an artist, and if they do upgrade their equipment, it might be one time in their entire life. Only the real enthusiasts and guys that are in it for the long haul wind up upgrading at several points in time in their career. Um, however, we are going to do kind of like a game show style format where we have a certain amount of money and we're going to make recommendations on things we would do if we could go all the way back and we had a certain amount of money, what we would buy to start off with. And then we're going to add a little spice to it and say, okay, would that option, would those items change if we had a little bit more money. So we're gonna do two case scenarios, one with $500, and then we'll go in with $1,000. Now, for a lot of you guys, I know it might sound appetizing to do an episode where we try to make a setup for $100 or $200 or less, but I'm gonna argue that that's probably the dumbest thing that you could do, because even if you only have um, $100, $200 or less, it's my honest opinion and I've been doing this for 20 years. That means I've been around equipment, I've been around studios, I've been doing this for about 20 years. And though it sounds cute to say any equipment can work in the right environment, and even though that is true, almost none of us are gonna be working in the right environment. We're gonna have something wrong, the room's wrong, the space is wrong, we don't have the software but we have the gear, etc. And so we need to give you the most versatile, well-rounded advice that works for everybody and not sit here and act like everybody's sitting in the right circumstances. Because if you were in the right circumstances, you wouldn't be watching this video. Um, point blank period. Real quick, Wayne, give them the quick snapshot. I know you've introed yourself before, but give us a brief intro before we roll into this of who you are, what you do. Yeah, um, my name is Wayne Classic. I'm a producer and artist, uh, predominantly in the uh, CHH space, and um, happy to be here. Awesome. Now, this is going to be a deep dive. At the end of this video, you guys should know different options that you can get. We're going to list all the items in the description below. We're going to talk about variations. This isn't going to just be, oh, get this mic, get this interface, whatever. We're going to give you guys a well-rounded opinion so that you have several options and tools to utilize when you're going on your purchases. And if you guys have equipment already, let this enlighten you in terms of the upgrade ability and what type of scenario, you, scenario you're in. Maybe you, <coughs> maybe you have some of this equipment, but not all of it. And that'll be a conversation in your own head of whether or not to upgrade. Um, now, I do want to say, what should we cover before we go into this? Oh, real quick, Wayne. Hmm. Have you had the same gear as you started the entire time of your artist path? How many times have you upgraded, et cetera? Just briefly let everybody know. I do not have the same gear. Um, I When I first started, I had a, a Dell inspirion or something like that mac uh not mac laptop um and a crack version of fl studios <laughs> how dare you just kidding <laughs> um short fun yeah. fact i started using fruity loops oh look yes. at my light oh yeah you're right annoyed. i said fl studios it i started you it was not fl studio i no. started using look at my lighting setup messing up here um i started using fruity loops at version 1.2 Two, I believe. So pretty much right when it became available to the public, I wow. was using it. So uh, I think it's three point, it's like three point five six or something. Uh, the crack version came from Kaza or more like one of those. Down you know, sites. it was a, it was a hacky time. Yeah, gotcha. There. Yeah, yeah. And, and so then, um, and then what did you? What was the? Give us the snapshot progression. Okay, I acquired this. Okay, I acquired that. I was this age. Whatever. Yeah, so um, after that, uh, a friend told me about Logic, but I didn't have a Mac. So I did end up purchasing a Mac when I went to college, one of those old uh, iMacs. And I got my first uh, my first copy of Logic. And yeah, I built learned how to work through that. Um, then I ended up upgrading to a MacBook Pro. Um, and then now I'm on an M1 MacBook Pro. A MacBook Air. M okay. M1 Air, yeah. And then microphones, interfaces, 
Yeah, so before uh, I had an M audio uh, interface, I had an M audio ultra. Actually, I believe I have it right here. Hold on. Uh, oh yeah, this guy. So I had this guy right here. <laughs> nice. Four <laughs> yeah, channels. Yeah, fast track ultra. Um so oh initially I had an M box. An mm -hmm. uh an avid M box because that was the thing you were supposed to get. And I was using when I got that that iMac that I mentioned, I was using um a uh uh, Pro Tools. I did work. On, I did work on Pro Tools for a few years. Right, because I'm pretty I, sure the M Box had a compatibility thing where you had to have Pro Tools to use it. Right, be, right, exactly. Yeah. And then from there, I moved to Logic, and I was. That's when I was using this guy right here, and then I eventually um, got a Focusrite Scarlett, which is what I'm using now. And then yep. microphone. Microphone is the M Audio Sputnik, um, which I mentioned on a previous episode that I'm actually still using this day, to this day. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, room treatment, anything? Yeah. So um, before I knew nothing about room treatment, it wasn't until about a couple of years ago that I realized you can do a pretty decent job if you kind of know what you're doing with... Um, uh, I'm looking around the room at my my panels. If you know how to build out panels and you know how to set up your monitors to catch reflections and do some different things. So um, prior to that, I didn't have anything like that. And it definitely affected my recording. And I was I'm now thinking, no wonder my recording sounded the way they did. But um, but yeah, I, I have a room that's fairly treated well. The only thing I'm missing is bass traps. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. OK. So quick snapshot for you. I'm going to just run through these really quick because uh, we want to keep this episode fairly short for you guys. So when I started out, I had like a Dell computer. I had a desktop microphone you could get at Best Buy for like $10. Um, and I had uh, Acid Pro mm -hmm. and, as a recording software. And I had that for a very long time. I eventually upgraded into a gaming headset instead of the desktop mic. Um because it felt cooler. I've been using Acid Pro for a very long time uh, back then and never did any room treatment at all. Um, just using, you know, standard pop filter. Um, interface was... Now, you know, I was blessed because my mom really hooked it up for me when I was 16, but prior to 16, um, I don't think I had an interface because the desktop mic could plug straight to the computer. The gaming headset could plug straight to the computer. And so all I really needed was that. And I was downloading free beats off of, you know, Kazaa and all mm -hmm. these different sites. So I download the beats. I'm wrapping on my gaming headset or my desk mic. And it was all gravy. I was in Acid Pro using no plugins, no mixing, just straight record, put the junk out, you know, distortion, you know, 10 dB above zero the whole night. Yeah. Um, and so <laughs> <laughs> no, no acoustic treatment at all. Then when I turned 16, my mom took me into Guitar Center and blessed me. I got the BX. She, she came in heavy, you know, great for me. Um, I did a severe upgrade, but that to me was the real moment that I was taking it seriously and got into entry level gear. And mm -hmm. mine's was above average because my mom was helping me out substantially. So I got the BX8M Audio uh, Studio Monitor Speakers. Uh, the interface I had, I believe it was called a Firebox, something oh, yeah. to that effect. It was Firewire based, um, yes. two channels in the front, four channels in the back. Um, I still was messing with uh, Acid Pro. Um, in and out of just uh, cheap versions of it, cracked versions of it, etc. Um, and my microphone, my first entry level microphone was a three hundred dollar at the time Groove Tube GT fifty five. The Sterling, uh, I, I believe Sterling makes a ST fifty five, which is kind of like a similar one, but uh, I think it's tubeless. I think it's a FET mic, um, whereas mine's was a tube. Uh, I think, I don't know whether it was like a FET mic with, uh, 
some type of characteristic of it. I, I believe since it's called Groove Tube, it had a tube in the capsule. So I do mm. believe it, it was a tube microphone, but it did not have a power bank needed to power it. So I, yeah. I, I don't really know. But that Groove Tube, that GT55 was a game changer for me. So that setup uh, at that time, which I used all the way through college, was the GT55, the Firebox piece, the M-Audio speakers, which I had no clue about, still rocking Acid Pro with no plugins and no real mixing and mastering, all into college. Nice. In college, I started wrapping my head around plugins and studio gear and really becoming more of an enthusiast than just somebody trying to make things happen. Um, so I started thinking a little bit more about things like acoustics. You know, I'm messing with uh, curtains. Um, I'm messing with foam. I'm thinking about the Chaotica eyeball at the time. Mm -hmm. um, I'm slowly moving into plugins, but they're all still stock at this time. I didn't know about uh, third party plugins. Um, once I started really, uh, I took a backseat and re really studied mixing and mastering. I then learned about third party plugins. And then at that time I had made the second set of upgrades once I got into more of a professional pursuit. And that was where I upgraded the, uh, microphone to the, uh, Vanguard audio labs, um, uh, V13, I believe, which was about an eight, $900 purchase. I um, then went to uh, uh, I so I did two different upgrades. I went to the SSL two channel interface, and then now I'm on the uh, Evo eight channel interface, which is amazing. I started getting things like headphone amplifiers. I started moving into analog equipment to try and mess with the saturation of my mic and be able to EQ and compress more of what you would call today a hybrid setup. So I had that. Um, I upgraded, upgraded to another set of BX eights, just different modeling. I started messing with vintage speakers and you know that now again, I'm in more of the enthusiast stage. So I've mm -hmm. messed with all kinds of gear. We want to give you guys some tips tonight, um, to just broaden your horizons. Um, oh, real quick headphones. What did you have? Um, so before I had the, oh man, I'm blanking. Right now, I have the uh, Bear Dynamics 990s. Okay. So that is my weapon of choice. And honestly, I've, I've been doing most of my mixing um, through that these days. Gotcha. And, and I, the headphone tuning um, software as well to help me with that. Okay. Gotcha. And so on my end, I've gone through a gambit of headphones. Um, I'll name some of them, but I definitely am going to forget so many different types. But um, I've messed with um, some Audio Technica stuff. Uh, I've messed with some AKG, more vintagey type of headphones. Um, as you can see on right now, I've got the uh, Bayer Dynamic 990s. Yep. Uh, I have the 770s as well. Um, I've messed a lot with the uh, Apple products just because people listen out of their laptop and out of their headphones. So I've also used that as reference material. Mm -hmm. Um, trying to think Bayer dynamic is kind of where I found my home for mixing yeah. headphones. Um, and just playing with that variety. And then I kind of just bounce between small studio monitors, large studio monitors, you know, mid, mid priced headphones. Um, Trying to think if there's any. I know there's a ton more, but there's just Bayer Dynamic has done me very well over the last like five years. And prior to that, I was just Don't messing with the car mix. What was that? Don't forget about the car mix. The car mix, exactly for sure. Yeah. And um, so before that, I was rocking with headphones that were always under about a hundred bucks um, mm. from Guitar Center. So you know their flat response, which is mainly the thing you need, is uh, audio accuracy. Um, I did make the foolish decision because of a lack of knowledge to um, try and mess with higher end gaming headsets like Sennheiser because people said those are more audiophile headphones and less gaming, uh, which could be more conscious of, of the flat response. But uh, I found out in the end that that's really just kind of like there's a headphone craze going on and everyone's trying to sweeten the headphone in different ways. Um, so as far as audio engineering and mixing and mastering, I, I, I made one purchase for like 150 to $200 that I completely regretted because it was not uh, audio accurate. And then mm -hmm. I dialed back, went back to Guitar Center, started learning more about headphones. So 
long story short, I've seen it all. Um, what I want to do now with the last like 20 minutes or so is Wayne, I want to give you $500 of invisible cash and, uh, I'm, I'm going to dive in and out of this with you, but, um, and let me caveat by saying this guys, don't ask for the two, $300 setup because even though it exists and I could probably get somebody off the ground running for about $250. I would say, because really all you need is like the mic, the interface, and there's a lot of free software out there. Yeah. I really think that's going to be a disservice to you because in the age today where you can mow a lawn or do a digital service or just sit for six months and ask your mom later or have a Christmas come around and get some cash, really when you get into the three to $500 space, I feel like that's like mandatory entry level budget. And so today we're going to talk about a $500 budget. So if you're the guy sitting with two, $300, my best, strongest recommendation for you is don't buy equipment. Just sit at home, write your music, get your beats, make, you know, create, focus on the other aspect of the music creation, which is the music and really mm. get some songs dialed in that you can memorize, that you're ready to perform, that you're very familiar with and allow yourself to get to that four or $500 price point and then go in because the difference in that equipment is going to be substantial. All of the equipment I've messed with from cheap to expensive will last you a lifetime, but really it comes down to the longevity of having a microphone that can give you a great sound and that can grow with you as an artist. And that's dynamic enough to where it can't just be in one environment and can't move around. Um, you want to get headphones that, are sturdy enough to be entry grade. You want to have a software that is something you can grow with. You really just want to make good decisions. And I've just found in my past that the difference between a $250 setup to a $500 setup is night and day in terms of the quality. Quality does mm. matter to an extent. Now you can always make it work at the lower level, but if it's literally a six to 12 month difference for you and getting a little bit more cash and investing in yourself. Guys, I'm telling you that $500 price point is going to be like super solid for you. Like I'm talking, you won't have to go back and make any adjustments for a very long time unless you want to, and you're making money at that point. Um, yeah. so let, let's dive into the $500 price point first. So Wayne, here's $500. I need yeah. a mic bare minimum. You can get more items than this. But bare minimum, I need a microphone, I need an interface, and I need a recording software for $500. What are you looking at? Yeah, so um, I was going to also caveat, the assumption is you have some, some form of computer. Um, because yes. if you don't we have are not talking about the laptop yeah. and the computer, guys, because quite frankly, if you don't have a computer in today's day and age, you have a whole different problem on your hands. <laughs> Thinking about yeah. being an artist and recording should not really even be in the sphere of what you're trying to do unless you're in just a really different circumstance and you feel called to do it. Um, yeah. There is a cost of entry in doing this art form. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. and, and not only that, but like if you don't have a computer, someone else does. Um, and, and, and really the price range, I don't want to recommend junky laptops because although they work or junky computers, um, you're going to have to use your discernment there. What I will say is this, most laptops and most computers of any price point can run the gear we're about to tell you. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. So I'm definitely more, I'm definitely a Mac guy, um, personally. Uh, so I would suggest, um, software. I would suggest, you know, logic, um, I, How much are we I, talking? So Logic is um, what, like three hundred dollars entry? Uh, it's actually one ninety nine, one ninety nine okay. entry. Um, and and now, is that a subscription or is that for uh, for life? For life, unlimited um, up updates. So something new comes out. I mean, since I've gotten, since I purchased uh, Logic, completely di got a facelift. It has it. It has the uh, scenes um, just like Ableton now, where it, with the grid and like there's a ton of things. It, they took um, Image Lines uh, drum machine designer deal, where it has like the you know the oh step sequencer with the yes. step sequencer, like brand new things that have been introduced, and I've I've never paid a, an additional dollar. Well, 
I never paid an additional dollar for the software. The secret for Apple is they want to keep you on their equipment. So what they do is they upgrade their softwares to basically keep you in the ecosystem so that you continue to buy their equipment. So I have I have upgraded, but not in their software, in their in their actual equipment. And as I said before, so I would recommend that. But I would even pull back a step further. If you are like a rapper or a singer and all you need to do is cut vocals to a beat, Honestly, I would even recommend GarageBand r- wholeheartedly. Um, I know some which artists, you get for free, correct? Which you get for free. It comes already on your Mac, and it also comes on your phone as well, which is an option. It it is, it is absolutely an option because um, there are interfaces that work directly with your phone. Um, just as well as there's entry level interfaces that work with your computer. So in terms of interfaces, I would recommend. Um, uh, for you can use both for phone or for your your computer. Um, there's the iRig HD um, where you basically one channel. They have the the HD and then they have the Duo, and that comes with two channels. So you can plug directly into that interface. Or if you're not going to go that route, you can do a Focusrite Scarlett two i two um, or a Focusrite Scarlett Uno. I think it's called. Um, so basically one channel or two channels, this is strictly for the person who is, um, just cutting vocals. They, they just need to cut vocals. And by um, cut vocals, he means you have your beat, you have your song selection. You're just right. recording vocals onto that track and doing some light mixing. One caveat I want to say to his setup so far, cause right now we're at potentially $200, possibly $0 until you get to the interface. Mm-hmm. Um, garage band has stock plugins. Plugins mm-hmm. are going to be a uh, interest or concern of yours as you move into recording. Do I need plugins? Do you not? No, you don't need plugins, but boy, do they save you time, energy, and quality. And they are the foundation to which every real engineer begins that pursuit. So um, now if you're just cutting vocals and sending them off to an engineer, that's obviously not important, but there are plenty of people who make great music with GarageBand, both mixed and mastered. You can also use third party plugins in GarageBand, but just out of the box, the difference between a program free like GarageBand and Logic is Logic is the better decision from a plugin standpoint because all of the most popular plugins from EQs to compressors to saturators to reverbs, I found out of all the DAWs, the stock plugins that Logic includes are far above and beyond almost everything except for Pro Tools. Mm. Um, so that's one thing to make note of because normally the stock plugins of a DAW are going to be super vanilla. They're going to have mm. no flavor, but you actually have analog emulation plugins with logic and with pro tools, um, that I would highly recommend. And it's, and it's an actual full suite. So, mm-hmm. um, so that's really the main differentiator. There is garage. Most DAWs that you're going to use are going to be a one. They're going to be fully packaged in terms of what they can do for mixing and mastering. But in terms of the stock plug-in side of things, um, if if you're wanting to get into that world, like just from the price of entry, Logic is going to be a great decision. If you're just wanting to mess with stock plug-ins and you need to go free for a while until you make that upgrade, uh, GarageBand's the way to go. I wouldn't recommend getting third-party plugins and putting them into GarageBand. That's just me because pl- uh, plugins get expensive. By the time you buy two or three plugins, you've already paid for the price of Logic, which well, comes with it. an entire suite. So that just doesn't make sense in my mind, but it is possible. I just don't recommend it. Yep, that's a great point. As far as microphones, I might recommend like the MXL um, MXL 990 that's a hundred and twenty nine dollar mic. Um, there's some Rode mics that are at that price point. Audio Technica. Um, there's actually a, a definitely a few. Question for you: Would you suggest finding a um, a a? Would you suggest finding a a microphone on like a resale site, like a Facebook Market? Do you think that that's the type of equipment that you can actually um utilize like going the used route like a yeah. reverb.com or like yeah, a sweet water or something yeah mm-hmm. so you that's a great question that um i did not think about is going the used equipment route yeah i would highly encourage used route for pretty much all of these items if mm-hmm. 
if money is the concern. Mm -hmm. If money is not the concern, then I would highly recommend getting new. Yeah. Hold on. Oh, start now. If money is not the concern, I'd highly recommend getting new. Um, mm -hmm. Just because you know it was fresh and you know it can go the distance with you. Mm -hmm. And there's no wear and tear on the stuff. Uh, yeah. Since this is entry level gear, you could find used versions of this that are 10 to 20 years old. Um, yeah. And then you might run into some connectivity issues or some wear and tear on the equipment. It's rare. The longevity of most entry level gear is like 10, 20, 30 years. Right. <laughs> you know, so I'm, I'm confident going used. Um, however, if you're not saving much money by doing it, I would yeah. start new. But if you have to go that route, Facebook Marketplace is an incredible tool right. um, to get discounted high-end gear. Reverb.com is also good. Make sure you can see pictures. Hmm. Are there dinks? Is, there, is the equipment dusty? Did it collect dust? Did the guy not even clean the equipment before he took the picture? Things like that. But used is absolutely the option um, if you want to save some money to be able to invest into some other things. But I think if you're right fresh into it and you got 500 bucks, I'm personally probably, with the exception of the microphone, going to go brand new on the interface. Mm -hmm. And you have to go brand new on the software. I'd be way more lenient in using a microphone because a lot of microphones can get fairly beat up or dinked or whatever um, and are going to be just fine. And, and that's that, going to that, be where I need the savings the most anyway. The audio interface, if yeah. you have some dinks or some static with that connectivity, um, you're really screwed. Like, there's just no way around it. That was my thoughts. I mean, the usually entry-level interfaces, the, the, the form factor, the build is not as good. That's, that's where they sacrifice. Um, but I was thinking that the microphone itself, I personally probably would be more confident in purchasing a used mic just knowing that for one, usually people take care of their mics because they usually comes in a case. They, they sit on the stand forever right. unless they got more than exactly. one. And most people don't have more exactly. than one mic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, um, are we missing anything on your setup? Um, Did you say exactly what kind of mic you would get? Um, I mentioned the MXL 990. Got it. Um, and then, yeah, there's a couple audio technicas at that price point. Um, the 2020. I, yeah. Yep. Okay, so yeah. let's tally let's tally you up at this point. We've got software that's two hundred dollars or free, and if you're using GarageBand, um, mm -hmm. you've got your interface, which is about one fifty. You said. Yes. Okay, so let's assume you get Logic and then get the interface. So that's two hundred plus one fifty. You're at about three fifty, and then you've got your microphone, which is a hundred to one hundred and fifty. So you're sitting somewhere between like four twenty five and five hundred dollars for that setup. Is there anything else yeah. you want to say before I kind of give my take? Um, you do need a mic. You do need headphones uh, to you record. Do. Okay, yeah. so let's assume you have like fifty bucks left. What would you get at that point? Oh man. Um. <laughs> what you would cut you do? it thin, <laughs> did you? <laughs> what would I do? I'd, well, most people I think have Apple headphones. Okay. And if you're broke and you've got the earbuds, the one thing you know is that when you go to mix that thing, um you have the reference point that the consumer is actually listening to the song from. So you might have the best possible chance of mixing it right because you know how the end product sounds. Um, for $50, there actually is some flat response, which is the only thing that really matters. And then you move up from build quality from that point. Um, yeah. The AKG black and golds, I believe, are 50 bucks, sometimes even 30 so the those at Guitar Center will definitely get the ball rolling for you. Um, nice. There is another one. Um, I recommend recommended these to Just Raised. I forget who makes them though. It might be Sennheiser. I think Sennheiser sells a music headphone in Guitar Center that's about seventy or, or forty nine ninety nine. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, if you're in the $50 range, you're low key kind of screwed. Like, huh? 
Yeah, I see AKG on Amazon, 54. Yeah, so, yeah. so they go during holiday as low as 30 bucks for the AKG entry level mm -hmm. ones. And I think they even sell some Sennheisers. They've got a wavy pattern on the ear cup that mm -hmm. goes between 50 and 70 bucks, and that'll definitely get you in the door. Um, I, I also believe they have some Sony's. Uh, that go down as far as twenty nine ninety nine. That are flat response as well. Um, mm -hmm. I, I I think it might be the M thirties or something. Um, but they but Sony definitely and Audio Technica actually have some entry level headphones between thirty and fifty dollars. So that's just barely getting you in the door. But mm -hmm. if I were you, it, I'm sitting there with headphones. Remember I said you know you might have to wait. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting there just using some earbuds. Mm -hmm. And I'm not putting out the music. I'm waiting six more months to acquire the other $50 to get into the $100 to $150 range where I can get the world just becomes your oyster at that point. So, yeah. um, Oh, yeah. one more thing. DIY, um, foam ball, chaotica eyeball. Yes. Be the last piece. And that's like $15. So. Yeah, so so for those of you guys who don't know what Wayne's talking about, the pop filter, um, to get the closest thing to the Chaotica eyeball, you can go onto Amazon and you can buy an 8-inch, make sure you get 8-inch or 7-inch foam ball. It's like a dodgeball that's used in PE. You can scissor or knife hollow it out, trace the circle from the tip of your microphone on the butt of the foam, cut the hole there and then have a DIY Chaotica that you can wrap in either pantyhose or some kind of material um, and, and be just fine. Now, I will say this though, as a counterpoint to you, Wayne, mm -hmm. um, as of the last year, I have seen a lot more knockoff Chaotica eyeballs that yes. are 20 or $30. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So like, uh, I'll give you guys an example. Um, this one behind me, that looks exactly like a Chaotica, and that was twenty-five dollars. Mm. I actually, it was so cheap, I bought like three of them and just started handing them out. Um, so there's, it, it used to be the Chaotica was three hundred dollars, and then they came out with a, I think it's called Midnight something. It was a hundred dollar knockoff of the Chaotica, but and which was still quite didn't quite justify it for me. Um, because if you, a pop filter, which is free or like less than $20 should always be enough if the room's treated. Right. But if your room isn't treated, that thing's definitely a game changer, but now it's down to 30 bucks. We'll have links to that as well that you can get on Amazon. You can get your own Chaotica eyeball for less than $20, $30. Um, anything else you wanted to add, Wayne? That is it. I believe you're ready to go. Okay, so I'm just gonna fly through this because we're short on time. Um, if if I had 500 bucks um, microphone, I'm gonna spend the most money on the microphone. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna spend at least 300 dollars, three to 400 dollars actually. And you're gonna be like, how the heck are you gonna make that work? I'll show you. So I'm gonna spend between three and 400 dollars on. I have several different mic choices that you guys can get. Um, the the Audio Technica 2020. I'm I'm just not a fan of the build quality of it. It's a very tiny mic, so if you're aggressive on it, you really gotta stay watch your distance and stuff with that. I would bump up to the 4030, the 4040 uh, Audio Technica mic if you're gonna go Technica route. You can get the Rode NT1. You can get the Rode NTK. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. which are all below that price point. Um, the Rode NT1000 uh, is a, or the NT2A, um, all those are like super popular, great high-end microphones. Vanguard Audio Labs has a $300 mic. Um, sure has a $300 mic. Um, I wouldn't really go the AKG route though. Those microphones are can be good as well under the $300 price, pr price point. Um, yeah, I'm not messing with any baby bottles, no bluebirds. Um, I'm just going AKG, uh, Audio Technica, Vanguard Audio Labs, uh, Lawton, the Lawton LA220s 300, or the Rode. Um, and those are going to give me a lot of different versatility of mics between $200 to $350. We'll have all the links in the description below. So I'm going two, three, two to 350 in the mic. Interface, I'm going to... If, you know, here's the thing. The 8-channel Evo 8 is 
If you want to get the four channel, it's like 100 to 150. To me, this is the greatest interface ever made for build quality to price point. I think the Evo 4, Wayne, you might want to look this up just to clarify for me, but I think the, the Evo 2 channel is like 100, the Evo 4 channel is 150, and the Evo 8 channel um, is uh, $200. So you can get essentially a, a 8 channel interface with extraordinary build quality, super mobile for $200. Um, so you don't need eight channels. Most of you just have a microphone, maybe one additional piece of equipment. So you can get the Evo 2 or the Evo 4 under 100 under $150. Is that right, Wayne? Uh, the Evo, uh, Evo 8 is 229 Evo 4 um, channel? And, and during holidays, all this stuff goes down as well, guys. Yeah. How much is the 4? Four? 4 is 129 129 so for 129 dollars i'm getting the evo 4 all day it's single-handedly the best interface um that i've seen uh i would only get that or the ssl2 interface these days um but you absolutely don't need it i again i wouldn't go used on the interface that's just me but mm. the evo 4 i think for 129 is hands down the best interface at that price point of all time wow. um so i'm getting that um, so the microphone's about, we'll call it $300. The interface puts me at about 420. Um, software, I'm going Reaper, which is free. Um, I believe it's a $60 one-time lifetime fee. I'm Reaper gang all day. Mm. Um, but if you have to, you can use it for free pretty much indefinitely. So my, my DAW or my software recording software is going to be free. Um, garage band if I'm stuck on a Mac, but I'm a PC guy. Mm -hmm. Um, so now we're pretty much left with maybe like what 50 bucks. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then I'm spending the 50 bucks on, um, I'm going to go one of two routes. I'm going to go buy a 50 pack of foam on Amazon for 50 bucks. Uh, and I'm going to foam up the corner, uh, or I'm going to find the reflection points in my house and do that. Or I'm going to take the 50 bucks to home Depot and get, a yes. medium density, gigantic wooden panel. And I'm going to have them slice that panel into two, uh, three sections, and they'll do that for free. I'm going to go to Joanne's or Michael's and wrap that thing in a, in a piece of thick fabric. Mm -hmm. And I'll have three very nice looking panels with a glue gun or a staple gun that I'll wrap the fabric around and make three panels. Um, there's another route that I'm missing, and I'm trying to think if I do it now. You can also oh. buy the panels and put the foam on the panels. Oh, the other route is I would go to Home Depot if I didn't want to do any of that, and this is probably the cheapest, cheapest because it's only going to be about $30, is I would buy blackout curtains for $20 to $40. You can get double thick for $30 to $40. You can get the standard blackout curtains for $19.99. And I'm buying four plant hooks. They're these little tiny hooks. They cost like 10 to 30 cents a piece. I'm going to buy four or five of them. I'm going to form them in the shape of a U on my ceiling. And then I'm going to hang the shower, the, the curtain loops into that U shape. And that will kind of be a DIY vocal booth. Now, if you go that route, you don't need any pa uh, padding in your house. Between the Chaotica eyeball and a U shaped curtain, that sits behind the microphone and wraps around you a little bit, you sound is not leaving and you'll have mm. plenty of sound travel with that. So those are three DIY routes. You can DIY the Chaotica. You can pay the $20, $30 on Amazon. You can slice three panels and go the professional looking route. Um, or you can get the curtains. The nice thing about the curtains is you only have four hooks in your ceiling and they're twisty. So you can twist them out when you move and just putty the holes. And when you're not recording, you can just take the shower or the uh, curtain loops off of it and go fold it, put it in a drawer. Mm -hmm. And that's my $500 setup. Now, real briefly, um, did you have any questions about my setup before I go into these common questions? How will you hear? What was that? How will you hear? Uh, like I said, so I will go iPod, Apple earbuds until I get to $100. I'm not going to get the AK. I'm not going the $50 or less route. 
Mm -hmm. I'm using whatever headphones are laying around my house and I'm just going to try to get good with cheap, inaccurate headphones until I get at least $120. Then I'm getting a holiday sale on a pair of Bayer Dynamic 990s, open back. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah. all, uh, the, the 990 Bayer Dynamics, with, to me, is the best headphone ever made under the $400 price point. It beats yep. out everything. Because I want an open back headphone because I want sound to leak and be able to hear the upper frequency range, um, which is almost impossible to hear with a good close back close unless back. you're spending over $300. And that price point is just insane for the build quality. Over the ear, open back, great drivers in the, the ears for $120 to $150, you just cannot beat that for headphones so i'm going headphone lists and just listening through the laptop or through the computer speakers um or you know or um you can go on well e earphones in my opinion you shouldn't get used that's kind of just gross i don't um, like earphones or I'm, I'm not even really a fan of getting speakers used just because it's so easy to blow the the drivers personally yeah, I and honestly i'm not even getting speakers yeah Yep. I'm not getting speakers unless I get professional and I start making money from this. I'm going to headphones all day. Headphones, mm -hmm. I'm always going to hear exactly the same sound. I'm going to be familiar with the same texture, and it's going to be a great foundation. If I'm working with speakers, sound changes, sound bounces around the room differently. You mm -hmm. have um, latency. Uh, not latency, but lag and bleed on your speakers. Most people don't know about. They buy an expensive pair of speakers and they're not even positioned right. And then the sound decay bounces around the room. You can't create the same sound twice. It's just annoying. Go headphones until you're a professional. Straight up. Straight like that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you know, if you wind up getting the $50 or less AKGs or Sonys or whatever, that's a great entry. It's a trustable source. But get headphones and you know, and, and choose wisely. Um, exactly. we're going to go to the most common questions that I was meditating on going into this episode. And then we will wrap up guys. Again, all of these items will be listed in the description below. And, uh, I am not a, um, I don't have vested interest in any of the companies that we are promoting. So this is not a sponsored video in the slightest. Very quickly, are dynamic microphones usable? In my humble opinion, I would never make this recommendation unless it is something I have actually heard with my own ears. When you get it into the dynamic microphone territory, things change dramatically, specifically on the low end and on the top end. Mm. All dynamic microphones have a lot darker of a sound on the top end and a fatter, juicier, beefier sound on the low end. When you hear about things like the proximity effect, those mm. type of problems get super amplified on a dynamic microphone. And it also is just not a sound that is used in professional music often, unless there's a very specific microphone, such as the uh, Shure Beta, uh, or the, uh, or not the Shure, um, the, the, um, I'm drawing a blank here. The SM58, um, the SM Beta C or Beta A or whatever, that's you know a, a, a brighter performance microphone. There's one exception to the rule being the SM7B um, because it's a broadcast mic that is one of the brighter microphones and it can produce a good sound. But in my humble opinion, the SM7B just... Anybody in my space that has used it, I think, has used it quite terribly. Um, oh, you know, you were right. It's it's the Sure Beta uh, 58A. The Beta 58A, the the SM57 uh, or the 58 um, is going to be a good choice if you're trying to go cheap. But those microphones range from fifty to one hundred and fifty dollars, guys. Just get the neutral FET microphone or the solid state microphone at that you're going to have a more balanced sound and less mixing problems mm -hmm. unless you really are treating the dynamic mic uh, appropriately. This Behringer, it's like a something 8,000, I forget, $20 microphone sounds phenomenal, but I would never use it for recording mm -hmm. um, just because it doesn't make sense for the price point of the item. Just get the solid state or FET microphone 
that condenser mic get what it's used for but dynamic mics i'm not hating on is those two or three sure microphones the sm7b um who makes that mic is it sure sm7b is uh um let's see sm7b is sure yeah Yep. Yeah. So those and are the that's only. The, that's the uh, podcasting mics. The and, and again, those mics sound amazing on radio, but they're harder to mix. Yeah. Uh, in in person, so I'm just not really going the dynamic route unless I'm filming a podcast. Uh, mm-hmm. Then now we're really talking because I would absolutely use those microphones over condensers for podcasting, um, right. because it's less post editing. Now, um, next question. The Mac or PC route, the only Mac distinctions Wayne had mentioned that I remember was if you wanted to get a free recording software, GarageBand is Mac only. Um, uh, Logic is not Mac only. Um, the microphones are never computer specific. Um, and oh, everything. Logic is Mac only. Is Logic Mac only? Yeah, so Logic is the, is the, the, the father of. Um, Garage man, logic is the upgrade. So okay. iMovie is to um, Final Cut Pro what Garage Band is to Logic. Okay, so my yeah. bad, guys. Mac specific. Um, I will say this. I think I said it earlier, but I will say it again. Any DAW is good mm-hmm. for me personally. It comes down to versatility of being able to use third party plugins. And it also comes down to, is it a subscription for full access? Mm. For me, most softwares cost $300 to $1,000 to get the full array of what the software offers and to actually own the software. Mm. If you go cheaper, it's subscription or they continue to upgrade the product and don't include you on the upgrades unless you continue to pay. For Mm. me, GarageBand, Reaper, those free, those are two of the only best softwares I personally know of that mm. just are coded from scratch, have a great build, great versatility, and great adaptability for the long term. And those are less than fifty dollars programs. GarageBand being free, Reaper being free to sixty dollars. Once you get out of that, you're looking at about two to three hundred dollars for cost of entry for stuff like um, Logic, Pro Tools, Acid Pro. Um, uh, 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 Ableton, you know, all these type of mm-hmm. softwares. And I have no bias towards any of them. Use what looks cool to you. Look it up online. Um, so hardware versus software guys, the stuff you want to start thinking about, and I can already tell we're breaking the episode. So we'll do the upgrade part two episode later. Mm-hmm. But as far as getting into the hardware route, when it comes to upgrading, or if you have the thousand dollar budget, I do think now that I'm thinking about it, that that's a much larger conversation because it's a subjective conversation. And mm-hmm. you're at that point, we're traveling into the realm of just what would wane and, uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's again, that's the enthusiast situation. Yeah. Or if you're really trying to get a little more professional, we'll go that route and the plugin routes later. We would use stock on everything we recommended in terms of plugins because again, they they cost a lot, you know, we're talking thirty to three hundred dollars per single plugin. Mm-hmm. So now that's a whole different conversation that we need to talk about at a different price point. I would go stock on everything at entry level so that you can learn to use the tools. Mm -hmm. Um, So we are USB mics ever appropriate in my humble opinion. Don't spend a single dollar on a USB microphone. It makes no sense to me. You'll probably get a better recording out of your iPhone. Mm, That's true. Record from your iPhone and then mix that material until you can afford a hundred dollar microphone. Or if you get a used microphone, that's cheaper. Cool. But USB microphones are not made for recording artists. They're made for convenient mic use when gaming or when communicating over something like Skype or something like that. Don't use the wrong equipment, guys. It makes no sense. And the price point is relatively close to the entry level microphone. Mm -hmm. Um, What do I do about the other stuff? stuff that's involved in artistry such as ads, visuals, social media, distribution, uh, Mm -hmm. beats. The honest question um, to the honest answer to this question, guys, is those things cost money. 
The way you save yourself time and money is YouTube. YouTube University. Mm -hmm. Talk to artists about what they have used, but I find that most artists don't have the budget to really give you a well-rounded opinion. They've only messed with what they've messed with, so I'm still trusting YouTube more because I can talk to more people on YouTube and really get a well-rounded sense of discerning the crappy videos from the good videos. Mm -hmm. But go on YouTube to learn about ads. There's great resources. Go on YouTube to learn about free and paid programs to do your visuals from filming to photography. Go to um, YouTube to learn about your social media use and how to maximize that organically and through paid means. Your distributors, go on YouTube, learn about all the key distributors and what the differences are. There's different goals with why you would want to pick a certain distributor over others in terms of your earning potential and in terms of the cost of entry. Mm -hmm. Beats as well. Beats, I'm always using Beat Stars for right now, and I'm mm -hmm. building a relationship with local producers such as Wayne um, to build relationships and to try to leverage each other's equity to do things that benefit each other equally unless mm -hmm. I'm just paying outright uh, in either direction for a mm -hmm. service. YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. On the next episode, since it'll probably be a little bit shorter because we're talking upgrades and we're talking more subjective, I will run through some paid ads, visuals, social media, distributors, and beat options, um, but it'll all be subjective there. Um, and lastly, should I acquire more skills if I'm broke? You mm. should require more skills all the time. Yeah. When you get to the point where you're stretched thin and you're doing too many things for time and money that you have, that is when you need to outsource or you'll find your, most people will find themselves in this situation. I don't have time to learn and I also don't have the money to outsource. If that is you... The solution is patience. Mm. Sit and plot and scheme on how you're either going to acquire the money to outsource or the knowledge to improve, to yeah. cut out the middleman. I will say this, guys. Don't be hard-headed. Don't think that you're going to find a solution that isn't money-based, knowledge-based, or experience-based. Don't be that guy who's stuck using the equipment and has no knowledge. Whatever you're utilizing in the recording equipment process, know your gear. Mm-hmm. Man. Hold, hold, man. On, hold on a quick second. Start from here. Know your gear. Yep. Read the know manual. what you're using. Um, that will help you to utilize your equipment to the fullest, and that will also give you more information to improve and know when it's appropriate to upgrade. Know when there's a problem that arises that the equipment upgrade can fix. Is it fixing a problem? How big mm. is that problem? You will not know unless you're learning. Finding ways to make consistent income to fund your music is single-handedly the best thing you could ever do because money will solve a whole lot of problems here. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't even have to watch this video if you had some money regularly coming in the door. That's true. Don't be cheap forever. It's another takeaway. Learn the skills. I don't there's times, bro, where my recommendation to somebody was stop making music and go mow lawns. Mm. Because in three to six months of mowing lawns, you will acquire enough money to do whatever you want. On the ads, on the visuals, on the equipment, the world becomes your oyster. Some people will spend five or ten years being cheap mm. because it hurts too much to, to grow in the knowledge and make better decisions. And I have plenty of podcasts on that, so we're going to end there. Wayne, I go on my rants, man. Is anything sticking out to you to share with the public before we sign off? Um, no, I just wanted to say like in – all of this, I think one of the biggest takeaways is, uh, you know, there's no excuses, mainly because there's there's so many resources out there. And um, I think more than anything else, the rant and the passion is really just to encourage you to step out and, and start and do it. Um, 500 bucks. People drop $500 on Jordans. <laughs> 
And, pe- yeah. and, and dude, people drop music on people got cheap gear and then dropped 50 to 100 bucks on music reviews just so they could feel good about themselves it's it's you know it's, it's absolute madness guys yeah. i i hope first off wayne thank you so much for for being you know like my conscience and uh <laughs> providing uh the, the the black and white the yin and the yang to yeah. a lot of these points i'm making and just to share your story and your perspective um yeah. i want to say um I'm going to put as many links as possible in my description of all of the equipment and the, and the options. Also, I forgot to mention audio test kitchen, Google Mm -hmm. audio test kitchen. You can try out any microphone in the world, um, and hear what it sounds like from rappers to singers in a perfectly treated room. So you can make the best decision. You can separate them by price point and quality. I mean, it is the library of do not buy a microphone until you've gone to audio test kitchen point blank period It is the greatest resource I've ever seen for mic uh, selection. Mm. Um, and it will be an amazing resource for you as you pick a microphone. But yeah, guys, um, I just wanted to vomit with Wayne uh, on our, not only our experience, but I think we do have some expertise here in terms of guidance. We tried to make it as broad as possible. That's why we didn't just say one mic or one interface. The mm-hmm. world doesn't work like that, man. Everyone's buying all kinds. If you go to, if you take 20 artists, I guarantee you all their interfaces are different. All their mics are different. All their DAWs are different. All their, their acoustic treatment looks different because there's just too much there's too much going on in the world that is a viable option and that's great news for you as an artist so if there's a variety of options available to you don't screw yourself don't cap yourself by not doing the due diligence of knowledge and learning learn the equipment whatever decision you make so you can see how good or bad of a decision it was and see how you can make it better yep absolutely okay uh I need to take a rest. Um, <laughs> uh, so speaking of which, guys, thank you so much for watching. We will put a part two out to this on a $1,000 budget. Wayne, could you please sign me out with any last-minute thoughts or just sign me off before we turn this stream off? <laughs> yeah, you're rocking with um, Conscience and Wayne Classic. And um, take care. Like, comment, and subscribe. We need yeah, you. Bro. Peace. Peace.